I want to discuss a situation that is not uncommon. A patient presents with chest pain and is diagnosed with either non-STEMI or a self-aborted STEMI. Cath shows a hazy lesion in one artery, for example, middle AD, with a stenosis that is less than 50% in multiple angiographic views and TM3 flow. IVUS or OCT is performed and it shows a plaque rupture with mild thrombus at this level. The overall luminal narrowing is less than 50% compared to the reference lumen. So this is Minoka, MI with non-obstructive coronary arteries. It's the Minoka subset with a plaque disruption, which constitutes up to 50 to 60% of Minoka. Should you stent to seal the plaque disruption? This case scenario also applies to STEMI that responds to thrombolysis and is left with less than 50% stenosis at the culprit area. This is the case of 15% or so of fibrinolytic treated patients based on pharmacoinvasive trials, such as transfer AMI and caress AMI. This is an OCT illustration. This is a thin cap here that is ruptured with a thrombus formation and a cavity behind the cap. This is another illustration. Again, you have a thin cap here and it got ruptured here with red thrombus formation and deep shadowing behind the red thrombus. You see also here red thrombus. And there is no significant luminal narrowing in geographically or by OCT, in this case or in the prior one. So should you stent those? The answer is no. In Minoka, even if you find a plaque disruption, there is no evidence that stenting improves outcomes in the absence of residual stenosis more than 50%. And in the AHA Minoka statement, they say it is not our practice to routine, routinely stent patients with Minoka and plaque rupture or erosion. I will provide more data. All the landmark trials that establish the benefit from PCI in MI and that dictate our daily practice used a 50% or 70% cutoff. And I'm talking about the landmark studies of early invasive strategy in non-STEMI, the landmark trials of primary PCI in STEMI, and the landmark pharmacoinvasive trials in STEMI. All recommended revascularization for culprit stenosis more than 50% in geographically, or 70% even in half of the studies. PCI for MI with luminal stenosis less than 50%, but high-risk IVIS features has not been studied on a large scale. In fact, small-scale studies question the value of stenting in this less than 50% setting with high-risk IVIS features. And I will give you those small-scale modern imaging trials that indirectly suggest medical therapy only for stenosis less than 50%. You have the Erosion 3 trial, which took STEMI patients with TM3 and non-obstructive residual lesion less than 70%, whether spontaneously or after wiring or thrombectomy. And those patients were randomized to OCT guidance or angiographic guidance. Eventually, 51% of patients were stented and 49% were not stented. In the OCT arm, erosions were not stented and close to half of plaque ruptures were not stented either. And there was no MI or cardiac death at one year in the non-stented patients, whether the culprit was a plaque rupture or erosion. The PROSPECT ABSORB study took ACS patients who received the stenting of lesion more than 70%, but who also had non-obstructive lesions with more than 65% plaque burden on IVUS, and they randomized them to stenting or non-stenting, and 
both arms have the same target lesion failure at two years. Also, in the original prospect trial of MI patients, non-culprit lesions less than 70% with high-risk feature by IVFs, such as thin cap or high plaque burden, left untreated, still only had 1% risk of MI at three years. All this suggests stenting may not be necessary for lesions with luminal stenosis less than 50%, even if there is evidence of plaque disruption on OCT IVFs. This is an illustration from erosion trial. This is an area that had a plaque rupture. You can see here, thin cap that rupture, and you have red thrombus formation. The luminal stenosis is less than 50%, and therefore this was left alone. This is another case here. Here you have a thick cap, not a thin, a thick cap without rupture and with a thrombus formation on top of it. This is what we call a plaque erosion, thick cap with no rupture and a thrombus formation. You can see here the thrombus, the thrombus here. This was left alone as well with no stenting. So when you have residual luminal stenosis less than 50%, stenting has a questionable value even in MI setting with a plaque disruption on IVIS or OCT. Yet IVUS OCT is still highly valuable in MI with less than 50% angiographic stenosis. One, it establishes the diagnosis of plaque disruption versus myopericarditis or coronary vasospasm and dictates aggressive DAPTs and high statin and risk factor control in this setting. Two, it assesses luminal stenosis better than angiography in hazy lesions and confirms that the luminal diameter stenosis is indeed less than 50% compared to the reference lumen. If there is a plaque rupture with luminal stenosis truly less than 50%, do not stand. And this is an illustration of the shortcomings of coronary angiography. This is the case of a severe stenosis, more than 50%, but it is eccentric. The lumen is white and the plaque is blue. The angiographic angles indicated by the blue arrows will miss the true severity of the stenosis. Only the black arrow will show the true severity of the stenosis. This is another case where the lesion is tight three-dimensionally. However, it is serpiginous with mild contrast filling in all direction. It will look hazy, but it will not look tight in any view. The third situation is an ulcer. So you have here a plaque rupture with an ulcer formation. The ulcer fills with contrast, but it's not a functional lumen. The only functional effective lumen is this white circle here. Yet the ulcer fills with contrast and may make the lesion look angiographically mild because of this contrast filling. So in all those cases, the lesions may not look tight, but may look hazy angiographically and will look tight by intravascular imaging. This is an illustration of a left main plaque rupture and ulcer formation. It doesn't look bad angiographically, but on IVUS, you can see the lumen is tight. This is the true lumen here, as indicated by the red. And you have a plaque rupture with an ulcer formation here and an ulcer there. The true functional lumen is narrow, but by angiogram, because of contrast spilling in those ulcers, the lesion may look mild by contrast in geography. This is different from that case where you have a plaque disruption and an ulcer formation, but the true functional lumen remains only mildly obstructive. This is another case of a plaque rupture with a cavity formation that fills with contrast. The true functional lumen is more than 50% obstructed, but by angiography, it may look mild because of contrast filling in that ulcer.